For those of you who don't know, I'm Maggie, and sorry things have been radio silent around here, and also, we should probably mention that this channel has a new name. So, for the past, like, I don't know, four-ish years or so, this channel has been called This or That, and when I first started my channel, it was with the intent of comparing, like, two things in every video, which was broad enough to where I could, like, I don't know, have freedom with the content, but also as time went on and my content changed a little bit, the name was no longer serving the channel as I thought it should be. And so last week, I actually launched a website. It's called maggiestwocents.com. And in light of that, I wanted all of my social platforms to have the same name. And so now this channel is called Maggie's Two Cents. My Instagram is called Maggie's Two Cents. And that website is called maggiestwocents.com. And I feel like it's a little bit more fitting for this channel since I am just sitting down and giving you my two cents on different products or services or whatever we happen to be talking about. So while the website is a little bit more personal finance based, it still ties in a lot of the content that we're still doing on this channel, which eventually will include a little bit more personal finance because I've heard from you that is a topic that you care a lot about. And as we've kind of dabbled in that throughout the years, you've always wanted more and more and more. So I'm trying to listen and respond accordingly, but we'll still do fun videos like this one today, which happens to be a product empties so that I can share my views on certain products and let you know, should you actually spend your money on those things? Kind of what this channel has always been about me helping you become a more informed consumer. So if you haven't already checked out the website, I encourage you to do so, but let's go ahead and dive into today's video. So the first product that I run out of is this Dove Bio Body wash. This is the hydrating aloe and birch water scent that is supposed to refresh and invigorate the skin. Now, this is marketed as a hydrating body wash, but something I've learned about myself rather recently is that I really prefer kind of a creamier body wash. This one had more of a like gel-like consistency. You could actually see through it and it was this really pretty kind of like light blue color, kind of like this water. But even though this is marketed as hydrating because of the formula and because of the consistency of the body wash, I didn't really find it all that hydrating. So if you are in the market for an actual hydrating body wash, I actually think that the method body washes that I've talked about ad nauseum on this channel are actually a bit better than this. And I also have another, like the traditional Dove body wash that is that creamier consistency in our guest room because these were on sale at CVS when we needed them at one point and that's just why we have them. But this one was good. It smells great. Maybe if you're somebody that tends to be a little bit greasier or maybe even in the summertime, I would have really loved this body wash. But since we're still somehow in these really cold months, it's like 28 degrees today in March, I really just need something that would moisturize my skin a little bit more. So I guess that's where I stand on this. A different time of year, I probably would have a different opinion. And while this smelled great and was effective and lathered well, this isn't my favorite body wash. All right, next up, we have the weirdest bath salts that we've ever tried. This is the Dr. Teal's Vapor Bath, and it has menthol, camphor, and essential oils. If you're really familiar with Vicks Vapor Up, it is this like Vaseline-like consistency. You put it under your nose or something if you're really stopped up, and it has like these really strong menthol scents, and it really helps open up your sinuses and like clear things out. This is kind of the exact same thing. Smells identical. And the same cooling feeling that you get on your skin when you actually put the topical version of Vicks Vapor Rub on is the exact same feeling that you get in the bathtub. So if you're battling a lot of congestion or you just really want your sinuses opened up, maybe you're just feeling a little bit stuffy, this stuff is gonna work. Like the vapors are there in your bath, but it makes you hot and cold at the same time. It's a really weird sensation on the body. And it took us a really long time to go through this tiny bag. And this bag is much smaller than the other like regular Dr. Teal's soaking salts that they offer. And I think that's for a reason because you need to use so much less of this than you do any other bath salts because of that weird cooling hot sensation. So does it work? Does it serve the purpose to like really open up those nasal passages? 1000%, but does it come at a cost to how comfy your bath is? 1000%. So you've been warned. I would repurchase this though. Like I think this definitely worked if we had really achy muscles or we're just feeling all like cold and stuffy in the winter months. 
But now that we're moving into spring and stuff, I don't see us like reaching for a bath salt like this. But maybe next October, November, we'll kind of get back into it once our sinuses flare up again. I also finished up this Ava NYC Satin Dream Smoothing Leave-In Cream. This says that it is powered by poppy seed and snow mushroom and it is supposed to smooth your hair, fight frizz, and hydrate. So I do think that this cream did all of those things. It did smooth my hair, it did help fight frizz, it did help hydrate. I feel like it did a really good job of keeping that like crown of broken hairs that I typically have at the top of my head at bay. I didn't love the scent of this, not that that matters a whole lot. For some reason, I just smell like black pepper in this. And I feel like if you're a really like woodsy scent lover, you would really love the way that this smells, but I don't know, it wasn't really for me. I will say though, I love the pump application and I think something that I've learned about myself and hair creams or leave-in conditioners or heat protectants, whatever it may be, is that I much prefer a pump over the spray because I currently am using a um, Amika leave-in conditioning spray and it is so oily and the fine mist gets everywhere. And so it gets all over the floor of my bathroom and it's really, really slick. Like I almost busted it the other day. So every time I use that, I now flip my head over the bathtub and kind of spray it over there. So it's just a little bit more high maintenance and I feel like creams are more evenly distributed. I don't know if I would ever repurchase this because the scent was just not for me, but the formula itself was great. But I think that I much prefer the Briogeo one that I used to talk about all the time. Um, I just haven't had to buy it in a while because I've always had these things lurking in my drawers. So that will probably be the next one that I repurchase is the Briogeo one. That's my favorite. Next up, we have the Paula's Choice Essential Glow Moisturizer. This has SPF 30, and this is a really nice illuminating SPF that can also kind of serve as a moisturizer. So points for this product because it is kind of a three-in-one for me and the way that I like to use it. But I will say, this is only a product that I can use in the winter months. This is not something that I can purchase in the summer because I end up looking like a crazy, luminous, greasy mess. And so I much prefer to use the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense in the summer months because it's a little bit more mattifying and I don't want that word to scare you because it's not gonna make you look like completely devoid of any life in your face or any luminosity. It's just a really good, natural, healthy looking SPF that's not as shiny as this one, which would just further accentuate the grease and the sweat and everything that ends up on my face when it's hot. This I feel like is a cousin to the ever popular Supergoop Glow Screen, but I don't think that this is as intense. So if you really love like how intense that is, you're probably gonna think this doesn't offer enough, but maybe if you've been intimidated by how intense that product looks, Give this one a shot. This one is a little bit cheaper, not by much, but I like this a lot. Again, you probably won't see it for a while because I don't like to use this in the warmer months, just a heads up, but I will repurchase this eventually because I do think this is really good. A kind of boring recurring one, so we'll stick it in the middle here. This is the Sensodyne Pro Namel Gentle Whitening Toothpaste. I have the world's most sensitive teeth and I notice a big difference when I use this toothpaste, period. I feel like some people think these are kind of like fake and they don't do much, but I did a little test to determine if that was the truth. And so I used a bottle of this and then I switched back to a bottle of regular like crust or something and noticed an insane difference in the sensitivity of my teeth. So I can't use anything but this. I like the flavor of it. When I travel, I've been traveling with these like really awful Colgate toothpaste that foam up in this really gross way and I don't like the taste of it. And so I've realized I am super partial to this and love that it does have that kind of gentle whitening as part of it, since oftentimes whitening your teeth and things like that can also lead to more sensitivity. So I know I'm doing that in kind of a safe way. I'm not gonna say that it's giving me like bleach white teeth or anything, but I drink a ton of coffee and I think it's doing a pretty good job of keeping everything looking normal. Next up, we have the First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Pads. These are supposed to exfoliate, tone, and brighten. And I love these things. Now, I hesitate repurchasing these because I don't love that they have like saturated cotton rounds and you're using one and throwing it away every day. Seems a little bit wasteful when you could just buy like a bottle toner 
and put it on like a reusable cotton round and use it that way. And this actually came in a gift set that I thought was extremely well valued around the holidays. First Aid Beauty has those products that I feel like can work for all skin types. Like it's good for sensitive skin types. Their products are no frills. They don't have any fragrances. There's not a lot of gimmicks with their products. They just are what they are. And I think that they're all really effective too. Like I'm currently using the moisturizer as my daytime moisturizer and I have no complaints. I just love how, I don't know, simple it is. It comes in these massive sizes. It's really cost effective and it's just a good product. So these are great, especially if you're traveling, let's say internationally and you can't travel with your like liquid exfoliants or something like that. This I feel like does the job of those liquid exfoliants for a short period of time. Now I like to use these in the morning as kind of a toner step after I like splash my face with water or wash it completely. Then I go in with one of these pads. Then I go in with like moisturizer SPF and the rest of the routine. And while I primarily like to use this in the morning, you can use this at night too. If maybe you don't already have an exfoliant in your nighttime skincare routine, this could be a good way to just add in a little something that's not overly harsh. Highly recommend these if you've seen them and wondered, but for me and my current like stockpile that I have, I don't need to repurchase these immediately. Next up is one of those surprising products that I was like, oh, that's just an extra step. Who would need that? No, I need that because I got this in a FabFitFun box a long time ago. I don't even subscribe to that box anymore. And I had heard a lot of good things about it. My friend had used this product and it looked beautiful on her because what this is supposed to do is it goes on like a balm under your eyes. You use it just like a glue stick and it deposits this really beautiful luminous layer under your eyes. And then you put your concealer on top of that and then you go forth with the rest of your routine. I was very skeptical over whether or not this would actually make a difference and it does. And I used this for like three-ish, four-ish months straight. Completely ran out of it. Like this has no room to go. Cannot pump it up any higher. And so I've already repurchased this because I waited two weeks because I was like, was that stuff actually making a difference or was I using it just because I had it? And it was making a big difference. I felt like, especially in the winter months when my skin was really parched and I feel like my like under eye circles are even more accentuated in the winter as my skin gets paler and paler. And yeah, this is, this is the real stuff. I think it adds a beautiful brightening layer under your eyes. If you struggle with dark circles, it feels really nice and cooling, like kind of a treatment under your eyes. And Tula is a certified seller on Amazon. So you could get this with free two day shipping. If you're a prime member, I highly recommend it. Already repurchased it. It's not a gimmick. I think it makes a big difference. It's easy to use. It's effective. It's kind of expensive though. I will say this is like 30 bucks but it lasts a really, really long time, like longer than a normal eye cream for sure. The last empty, and then I actually have two products that I'm not out of, I just can't use, and I'll tell you why. But this one is the 15% Vitamin C Serum. This comes from Youth to the People, and this also came in a really, really well-priced gift set. Now, I kind of flew through this. I think I went through this in probably, I don't know, three weeks to a month, so maybe I didn't fly through it for the size, but, the full size of this product is like $65, so I have been really waffling over whether or not I need it, but I swear this made a really big difference in the daytime when I was using it. So this is supposed to brighten, firm, and de-puff, and I feel like it just did such a good job of going on and making my skin tone look really even, but also feel super soft. And I don't struggle with a ton of puffiness. Maybe if I like had a couple drinks the night before, I'll be a little puffy the next day. I just felt like overall, this was doing really good things for my skin in a really subtle way. And I kind of think it's worth it. I talked a lot more about this in a favorites video because I was wowed by so many of the Youth to the People products. I've tried their face wash, I've tried this one, and I've tried uh, their like super whipped moisturizer or whatever it's called. That stuff is good, and as soon as I run out of my other moisturizer, that will be the one that I buy because I just fell in love with their products so quickly. They're so effective, and I love that all of their packaging is fully recyclable. They're really, really cognizant of the ingredients that they're putting into everything that they make, and I, I just am very, very impressed with the brand. So if you've been looking for a good vitamin C serum that actually does a good job like evening the skin tone, doing a good job of de-puffing, brightening the skin a little bit, 
this stuff is this stuff is legit. The next product is obviously not empty, as you can very well see, but this is the Earth Harbor Sunshine Dew, and this is an antioxidant cleansing oil. So what you're supposed to do with this is use it as the first step in getting ready at night. So with dry hands, you take a little bit of this product, drop it into your hands, and then you rub it all over your dry face. And it is supposed to be the first step in cleansing and removing that makeup and two-step cleansing is supposed to be really, really great for your skin. I would liken this to products like the DHC cleansing oil, which is actually my favorite, and I much prefer the pump method of getting the product out instead of this dropper method, and I felt like the DHC formula was so much more effective than this one at actually removing the makeup and actually making your skin feel clean before you go in with your typical cleanser. And this one was just a little bit overly greasy. Like I couldn't get it off of my face really easily. And I think that it was contributing to breakouts. So as soon as I put two and two together, I stopped using it and I just never went back. I just scratched my neck and it is like really noticeable, weird. Okay, nah, I don't know. Just didn't work with my skin type. So if you're looking for a good cleansing oil, the DHC deep cleansing oil is fantastic. But if you much prefer the balm style cleansing, method, then I would recommend the Pharmacy Green Clean. I just don't like dipping my hands in a jar like that, so I prefer the pump style bottles, and I'm glad I tried this, but not for me. This is another product that I got in a subscription box, and this is the Grown Alchemist Hydra Repair Day Cream. This is the second time that this has come in a subscription box for me, and I tried to give this another shot. I didn't like it the first time around, and I, I didn't like it the second time around. This is one of those moisturizers where when you put it on, it doesn't rub in easily, number one, which is super annoying. But number two, once it does, it feels like it's just a mask sitting on your face. I remember distinctly putting this on my face one time and then walking out of my apartment many years ago to go get coffee, and I immediately felt like there was just sweat beating up underneath it. It was the weirdest sensation. I did not like the feeling, and it also feels like you just have a coating if you try to use it as a hand cream. So this is just not for me, and I think that this is finally why I just like gave up subscription boxes in general is because you didn't have control over all of the products that were coming in your box most of the time with how the models are set up and that's fine. But then you run into this situation where multiple boxes are trying to partner with the same popular brands and then you end up getting multiples of the exact same product that you don't like. So I feel like my money is just better spent on products that I know I'll like or products that I actually want to take the risk and try than to be putting money toward things that I can't control. So that is kind of why I've stepped away from the subscription box scene altogether with the exception of like newly the clothing rental service that I've talked about like a bajillion times. And that is it. Those are all of the empties and I guess like product failures from the past couple of months that we just went through. And if you like this style of video, I actually do have an entire empty products playlist that I can link in the description box below for you. Don't forget to check out the website if you're curious about what we have going on over there. And if you like this video, than like it. Stick around, subscribe, join the community, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!